And this is how I describe and define side control positions. The arm that he could be attacking, the one kind of in front of him, the, so far our escapes have been when my arm is under his far armpit. Those are our, our main two escapes, which were an elbow escape and a belly down escape if he uh, blocks my near hip. But this week we're going to talk about when this hand is a different place. So there's far armpit, which is, as far as I'm concerned, is a green zone. We talked about that. This is a green zone. When it's inside the hoop of his arms, it starts to be in more danger. On the near side of his neck, within the hoop of his arms, at least I can see it and I can sort of attach to him. And those are a couple of good things that make this like a yellow zone. But if my arm is on the far side of his neck, um, this is red zone. So I never want this. I never want my arm to be over here. But it's very important that we know that there's a, like a good place, which is out of the hoop, that I could have my arm. Um, a not as good, but still workable place, which is the yellow zone, which is here near neck, near neck, and then far neck, red zone. Don't ever be there. If you get here, it should be like your number one priority to sneak it back and start to work your way back up the sort of, uh, you know, ladder of positions for my arm. So near neck is the focus of this week. First thing that I want to do from near neck uh, this week is talk about getting this back into the green zone because those are where our, our best escapes are probably going to be. In order to do that, I just want to talk about the, the one source of power I have down here, which is the frame. So when I put this frame together, the basic frame, I'm just going to put my the pads of my fingers on his shoulder blade as close to his neck as I can. As soon as I even touch my fingers down, you can see his head move. And that, that was not, I didn't flare my elbow or anything, but just as soon as I touch my fingers down, because this closes a chain and makes my frame much stronger. From here, I'm gonna bridge off my feet, and this is gonna be the kind of bridge that's not straight up, but it's trying to put his butt on his heels. I bridge toward him, up onto my one shoulder, and now this hand, I'm trying to swim back between us so that I end up uh, in the green zone, in the far armpit. So one more time, from the yellow zone, I'm going to touch down my frame here. So my fingertips, don't grab material, nothing like that. Just fingertips on the shoulder blade as close to his neck as possible. So this is not as helpful as this is. From here, I'm gonna to bridge toward him. I'm gonna uh, sort of traction my arm so my elbow goes kind of that way, but it also opens. So I can do those two things as I bridge. And you can do it nice and slow on your, on your partner in here. It creates a ton of space, very uncomfortable on the neck. And now this hand can just go between our bellies into the green zone. The one thing I don't do, so make sure you're not doing this, um, would be to frame and bridge, that's all good, but don't take this out, don't extract and insert. It should just be that my elbow is kind of like the point around which my arm rotates. And it never really appears to him, because this is the kind of thing he could put his head down on and maybe start to attack. Yeah, so, so do not pull your elbow back. Once you bridge toward him and flare, you can use that space, this hand just goes across the bellies. You want to expose your elbow as little as possible. And now we're in the green zone. There's an alternative position I can get into, and it's also a position that helps you bear weight and brace your opponent's you know, weight and squeeze. So that position is this. I'm actually going to go from what this arm is usually doing, and, and that is sort of blocking this hip, or it's a, it's a sensor to feel if the person's trying to walk north south but i'm going to change the position of the hand so that both hands are basically holding his shoulder and from here i'm going to bridge and i'm going to try to get my elbows inside so that is this elbow underneath his belly but also uh, the elbow on this side we turn the elbow on this side is going from outside of his arm if i could even inside of his armpit and now i have basically a clamp on his shoulder so the good thing about this is he can put as much weight on me as he wants and the weight is now going to go through my arm bones and to my shoulder blades into the floor and basically never prevent my breathing or anything like that. This is an incredible way to brace and bear an opponent's weight and squeeze. So again, I just really simply bridge, held the shoulder and I wiggled my, my elbows underneath him. The bridge might be what you need to create the space though. So bridge and then as you fall away, you know, tuck these in, hold the shoulder. This also prevents him from sitting up. So it is a keep. In addition to being a brace, it's also a keep, keeping a shoulder. It's hard for him to pull that arm out possibly, 
It's hard for him to go to neon belly because I'm limiting his altitude. It's hard for him to, uh, he can't switch to Kesagatami because uh, I have this arm trapped. So there's a lot that this does for me. If you want to add just a little bit uh, to this, a little bit of pinning power, you can also put your chin to your chest and push off your feet a little bit. And now I'm really pinning his arm with the back of my neck. Okay. So if I just rest my head on the ground, there's a little arch under my neck uh, that he could pull his arm out of. Right? That's that little space. It's the space he fits in. But if I put my chin down and then I push off my feet, now my straight neck is on his arm. It's, gonna be, it's just way harder to pull it out, especially if I'm keeping this. There's a few things I want to try and use shoulder clamp position for. The first one is our original goal of just getting back into the green zone. So let's do that. That's, it's a very simple movement. So uh, he, he's got me here and you can put your hands together and everything. Yeah, he's got me here, but I got my, I got my little position here. And from here, it should be very easy to bridge again his butt toward his heels. And then as I drop away, which only know only I know when I'm going to drop, I can bring my hand across to the safe side. So if I bridge toward him, you can wait as long as you want. But when I drop, only I know I'm dropping. And so there's a huge space for my hand to come back across. And now I'm in the beginning of you know whatever escapes it is that I prefer to use from that green zone. So the whole thing going from near neck into the shoulder clamp and then back into the green zone, it will have two bridges because there will be one when I get my elbows inside and another when I switch my arm across. One to get the elbows in and a second to get this underneath. And now we have our escapes from under. Going to bridge, drop into this space here. I'm keeping the arm here. And now, instead of going to the green zone, instead of worrying about getting my arm underneath, maybe I'm just finding that I can't. So we're gonna do some of the stuff we always do when we do an elbow escape, which is to bring my hip out. Okay. I, I elbow escape the best when I'm able to turn on my side, but I can't just turn on my side. That assumes I can move mech. You can't move a big person, you can't move a person who's like really intent on keeping you down. So instead of trying to roll toward the person, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck my closer hip away from him underneath the other one. So I'm going to walk my feet and move the hip that was closer to him underneath the other one instead of trying to pull vault the far hip over the near one because it, all he has to do is push me down and I'm, and I'm going to be flat again. So we walk our feet out, get on our side, and from here I'll be able to insert this knee. Put this knee in. The rest of our elbow escape is going to be trapping his foot here. I can help myself do that by pushing with my shin to reach it. Once I make contact here, I can put this original foot back on the floor and I can actually just rock him over. And I probably won't get top position. He'll probably catch himself, but I'll be able to get guard. Get the shoulder clamp, fix my lower body, insert the pry bar, catch his foot. This is basically so he doesn't walk away from me. And now use the pry bar pry this way. Push that in. From here, I'm actually going to put my thumbs underneath his arm here. So it's a small difference, but now I have my, now I have a grip basically around his arm. And from here, I should be able to clear my head. Even if I just clear it to the inside of his arm, that's fine. I don't have to put myself deep again. So from here, I'm going to put my thumbs in, clear my head, bring my knee in, and my leg comes over his head. And I should catch an arm bar uh, right there. So bridge, I go to my shoulder clamp position. I'm gonna change my thumb position so that it's under his arm and get my head down. Now, the way I move south is you can dig your heels in so you can just get a little southward motion like that with your heels digging. So here and now my knee's gonna come between my body and his body. My leg's gonna come over his head and I'll catch him here. Knock him back with this arm bar. Push it here. Now, he's falling over. That is the thing that will happen 
probably the most often. I, I certainly could finish from the bottom if I can um, posture him away. So that would look like this. Get my shoulder clamp. Pull myself south. If he postures up instead, I could, it's definitely possible to finish this armbar at, at that altitude as well. But I think it's the most common and should be your goal to clamp down and roll him over. So I'm clamping down my heel and then I'm, I'm basically extending my, my collapsed leg, extending my collapsed leg so that he falls over. It is a better place to finish than being underneath. So last time. Clamping my legs over and down. If I set up the shoulder clamp, sort of counter attacking arm bar here, and I clear my head, and I get myself in position for this, but he postures out of the arm bar, it's definitely possible we just end up in guard, and that's okay too. Guard is also a good result, considering I was on the bottom. Thumbs in, I'm gonna dig in, I'm gonna tilt my opponent, get down here, come up for the arm, yes. Guard is an okay result as well, and it's definitely a positional improvement from being on the bottom of side control. Instead of getting the shoulder clamp position and working my elbows in from the bottom of this near neck position, I have another set of options and they fall under uh, running to turtle. I'm going to this time bridge and bring my hand inside the bicep. This is the beginning of clearing space for me to run actually that way to turtle. I can brace her shoulder here and now I'm looking with this hand to C-grip her uh, elbow crease right here and that opens a little door for me to run. Okay? And that's literally what it looks like. I'm going to run to turtle. I don't just roll over to turtle. I'm going to take my bottom leg and take a big step, and then I'm going to, from there, take the rest of the step to get head to head. If we reset position and we were both on our knees, that would be a huge positional upgrade from the bottom of side control. Let's look at that one more time. I'm going to bridge just to get this hand inside. That's going to relieve a little pressure, and then this hand can also be relieving pressure so that this hand can go do the other job, which is to open the door. I'm just C-gripping her elbow crease right here with a stiff arm. And now I run to my bottom foot first, and then the other foot. If we ended up reset on knees, that'd be a, that'd be a good result. And that's what we'll do when we first review it now. So bridge and swim inside the bicep, supporter here and um, elbow crease, stiff arm the elbow crease, and then bottom leg first takes a step, and then turn to face your uki. All right, now that we've gone to our knees, we've run to turtle, uh, there are a couple things that can happen. Let's talk first about if I run to turtle and she puts her chest on my back. I'm gonna bridge and get this hand in. I'm gonna create a support here, stiff arm here. I'm running to turtle as, as we've seen, but this time she's gonna put her chest on my back. Yep, and now I'm truly in like sort of a turtle position. From this position, it's, it's a really common first thing for her to do to wrap my neck. But even if she doesn't wrap my neck, this may be a choice uh, that I make to close the distance and do essentially what is a double leg takedown from the knee. So when I'm down here, if she grabs my neck or even if she hasn't yet grabbed my neck, when I grab hold of her femurs and put my ear to one side, what I can do is drive in, I'm trying to put her butt on her heels, and then she'll pick a side or I'll pick a side. So when I drive in, put my, my ear here, Either she will tip over one side or the other. If she tips over, let's say to the side, my head is not. Say I put my head here and she tips over this side. It's much easier for me to just drive in and get on top. Now, I want my body on the opposite side of my head always. So this goes for any time somebody puts you in a guillotine. If you can hurry up and get your legs to the other side from your head, this guillotine here that we ended up in, this isn't one that she could finish. I only need to bug her neck and she won't want to hold on to that any, anymore. So that's not a guillotine she'll finish. So if I can get my legs to the other side of the body than my head, I'll be good. And she wraps the guillotine, I'm gonna grab her legs 
drive in. I'm trying to put her butt on her heels. And this time, let's say she falls to the head side. If she falls to the head side, I want to do the same thing. Get my legs to the non-head side. I'm going to do it by jumping past the legs. And I'm, and I'm same thing, legs on the opposite side of my head. So one way is longer than the other. You notice that when we fell to my head side, I had to clear her legs. I had to jump over and get to the other side. Where on the other side, when she fell, I was done. That's definitely true. And you just have to get good at both. So we're going to practice both. Now, we're here. I grab the femurs. I put my head. I'll do it on this side this time. Put my head here. I drive forward. And if she starts to fall away from my head, that's good. I'll just drive in and I'll end up on top again with my head opposite my legs and if she falls toward the head when I do this we fall this way I'm just gonna have to get past her legs this way one thing I can think about while I do that is clamping her legs together so Heather Raftery uh, taught at a seminar we recently went to and she was she taught a whole class talking about mermaids don't have guards and the idea is that if you hold someone's knees together it's much harder to hold you in the guard the same is true in this case where she had my head here and I had to get to the other side if I walk past her legs, I'm gonna get put in the guard and she's gonna win. But since, since I already had the legs between my arms, if I just squeeze and hold them and jump over, I should be able to safely get to the other side. Okay, so now that we're running the turtle, we have a double leg option, uh, but I want to show you another option, which is to do a, a mini inversion or to do a half Gramby roll. And that looks like this. It starts the same, I'm gonna swim in, I'm gonna support, I'm gonna create a little door for myself to run through. And this time I'm gonna run, but not all the way. This time I'm gonna run, I stick my leg up to begin, and I run to here. And what is here, here is like some of the way around. I got my knee on the floor and my shoulder on the floor, but I only went to my toes. I did not go to two knees. Two knees is a commitment where I have to get up and do this. This is, this is less of a commitment. And I want this tripod that I'm in on my shoulder, knee, and foot. Foot was the last one I put down. I want my butt as high as possible. So to get your butt as high as possible when you're in this kind of tripod, you have to bring everything close to you. And if your knee, is collapsed in it's a mistake but you solve every problem if you just think well I need my hips higher just as high as you can get your hips because I want her to run into my hips if she tries to move forward so get in here open the door um, this is the shoulder on the ground this is the knee that's gonna be on the ground this is the foot that's gonna be on the ground and then I want my butt as high as possible so everything comes in close and I make sure that my knee is basically not flared in but flared out this is a good tripod. And for now, let's have, because it's new, let's have the oopy hang back and I can finish the movement that I'm gonna be doing uh, by just finishing a front shoulder roll. The second half of, of a front shoulder roll just looks like this. And she's back in my guard. The whole thing would look like this. I get this in, open the door, I run to here, and then I just do a front shoulder roll and she's back in my guard. Okay. The thing that she's doing to help me as it's a new uh, movement for me, is she's not chasing me down, putting her weight on me yet. Bridge, hand comes inside, open the door. This will be the knee, this will be the foot, and then shoulder roll, and she's back in my guard. So if I create this space and this doorway, and I run to here, and her weight's on me, firstly, this is a good position because I can bear a lot of weight. Right? I could have the biggest guy in the room get on me here, and this tripod is kind of no big deal. Knee, foot, shoulder, and with my butt way up in the air, like this, I can actually bear a lot of weight. If I need to do my front roll, but she's on top of me, I could do a front roll and probably force it to happen. But if you need, if you really do have someone big and, the, and you can't even force it, what you can do is a little bit of a, a mule kick with your butt. So I can bend my knees and sort of bump my opponent off. It's just a little... Oh, just a little nudge and then roll and that should get you there in here I run my opponent stays with me and there's some weight here I can actually bear the weight because that's what this is designed for and now with my butt as high as I can get it I'm gonna bend my knees so I can just do a little 
bump with my butt, little mule kick action. So bump and then roll. It should remove the weight long enough to clear the space enough to just force the front roll and make it happen. 